Okay, we're going to be starting a new um, chapter looking at numerical solutions to equations. And um, the reason we're going to be doing this is because sometimes we'll have equations that aren't that easy to um, solve using algebraic methods um, like factorizing or use, even using the quadratic formula. Um, and so we, but it is sometimes really useful to be able to get an approximate solution to an equation even if it's not absolutely um, accurate. Computer program software written it can be written that can give a, a true solution to some of these to these equations really really quickly. But it's still good good for us to be able to have a way of re looking at these and thinking what looking at a problem and thinking what could be a possible solution, or if you're a software engineer developing um programs to solve complex equations to be able to get a handle if your program's working to have a good um, intelligent idea of what the solution should be to give you an indication if your your um, programming has worked or if you've got some error in in your code so um, having this toolkit handy to look at equations and to have a, a rough idea of what's happening and what the solutions would be is something that props up again and again not just in computer programming but also in um, in engineering and um, other fields of science and mathematics so let's um begin and we're going to be beginning at, at finding a starting point to tackle a problem um, and the method that we there's many different methods that you can employ for finding the numeric, numerical solutions, but the method that we're going to be using is called an iterative formula method. Um, so let's look at how do we find our starting point. <coughs> so there's a couple of ways that we're going to start off with. First is going to be the graphical approach. And in the graphical approach, we will separate an equation into two separate formula and graph them and see what where these formula will, will intersect. And the second way is what we call a change of sign approach. When we solve our equation for two different values, and if we have a change of sign, for example, um, if we if we go here and you've you've got um, some value of a and some value of b, and you've got this f of x here, f of x f of a is um, a negative, and f of b is positive. We know that between that there's some value of x between a and b which is going to be the solution to our equation because we've got a change of sign. Um, so let's have a look at an example and see how this works. So by sketching the graphs y equals x cubed and y equals 4 minus x show that the equation x cubed plus 4 minus um, x minus 4 equals 0 and has a root um, which we're going to call alpha between 1 and 2. Now if you look at this here, this equation, what this is, this is when we have x cubed 
equal to 4 minus x. If we rearrange that, we get x cubed plus x minus 4 equals 0. So you see how this is the equation that we're interested in. We want to see what the solution to this equation would be. But by, by rearranging it and getting these two other functions and graphing them separately, we can get an idea of where the root for this would be. So, x and y. Now, we, x, y cubed is one of these um, functions that we, you should just know what it looks like. It's a really um, common function, and so we just know what it looks like. So it's what is comes up like this. You've got a turning point here, and it goes up like that. So that's y equals x cubed. And y equals 4 minus x is going to be um, well, minus x. You just got x, your coordinates here. This is the equation of x would be this way, but minus x would be that. So it's this line, but it's shifted up because you've got the 4 here. So we'll do, we'll come down here, and it goes down here. So you've got y equals 4 minus x. And by doing that, you find that by graphing it, it cuts, this would be 4 here, it's going to cut between 1 and 2. So when you make your sketch, you're showing all the key features of each graph, such as um, the coordinates of any turning points. The turning point here is quite obvious because it's, it's x cubed, so it's just at the origin, and where they intersect. Now from this, we can then see that... Um, The solution for x cubed plus four my x plus x minus four equals zero must be have a root between one and two. Um, let's now look at an example where we use the change of sign method. So show by calculation. the equation f of x equals x to the power 5 plus x minus 1 equals 0 has a root between 0 and 1. So when you see this bit here, it says by calculation, and you've got um, some values that you want to explore, the first thing is, is to find out what the value of f of x is between those values. So we're going to find f of 0, that's going to be 0 plus 0 minus 1, which is obviously minus 1. That's like a 7, so we'll put your line there. And then we're going to find f of 1, which is going to be 1 plus 1 minus 1 is equal to 1. So we've got a change of sign. So 0 must be, alpha must be between 0 and 1 because we have this change of sign. So if we were to sketch that section of it, it would come up kind of like that. And um, here would be 1. And if this is um, 0 is down here, minus 1, here's 1 here. So it must go there, and so you've got this crossing over of the x-axis giving you the um, solution. Um, we'll do one last example. So firstly, 
by sketching. a suitable pair of graphs show that the equation cos x equals 2x minus 1 where x is in radians and it has a root for so oh, just wait a minute that's not what we want and it has one root for x between 0 and half pi. And secondly, we want to verify by calculation that this root lies between x equals 0.8 and x equals 0.9. So let's draw first. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw y equals cos x and y equals 2x minus 1. This, that's logical. It's already got them e equal to each other. Um, sometimes you might have um, an equation that you need to rearrange into something that would be would give you two logical um, equations to um, sketch. So again, the cos function is one of these functions that you should just know what it's like. So at zero, it's uh, x equals zero. It's um, the cos of x is one, and then at pi over two it's zero. And now two x minus one if if to if um you're not quite sure what a function looks like draw yourself a wee table. So we need to we know we need to deal with one um zero x equals zero. So x equals zero the function is minus one and we are going to deal with um Let's deal with a um, function of 1, x is 1, that's going to give us 2 minus 1, which is um, 1, and so we've got this change of sign. So let's do a half as well. If you rearrange that, you'll find a half is going to be 0, so we know it crosses the, the um, x-axis at um, a half, you can, just, you can just see that just by inspecting it, um, that would all make sense. You've got, and we know it's a linear equation, so it's going to be a nice straight line. It starts down here at minus 1, and at half, it's going to cross, and so there we go. And I'll just keep going up as x increases. And so we can see it's going to cross at that one place. So the graph intersects only once. So the equation, there's only one point of intersection. So cos x equals 2x minus 1 has, or oh, between these, um, between 0 and pi over 2 has only one root. And now we're going to verify by calculation that the root lies between 0.8 and 0.9. So let's look at cos x 
oops, let's do the base B note C, um, equals to x minus 1. So we're going to rearrange this, so we'll have cos x minus 2x plus 1 equals 0, and that's going to be our f of s, so let f of x be And then we'll have f of 0.8. That's going to give us, just literally plug it into your calculator. And we'll get 0 0.00967. So it's really close to 0. And then 0 0.9. And then that's minus 0 0.1783. There's the oh, it keeps going. So there's a change of sign. Which implies there the presence of a root. So I hope that helps.